Well, 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 who do we have here crawling back? That's right, it has been a while since I've done one of these mystery art supply unboxings with Art Snacks Plus. So what do you guys say we just open up the box and see what we've got? So the first thing we have in our box is this Strathmore Bristol paper, which is really convenient because we can put down this paper and swatch as we unbox stuff. Just gonna sneak our paper right here. And oh my gosh, I completely forgot. My favorite thing out of Art Snacks is getting these bubble wrapped. Why do I love them so much? I don't know. But before we get into the art supplies, we do have to check out our snack and art snacks. I can always depend on a warhead to really bring me back to my childhood and yep, it's pretty sour. So our first art supply is this King Art Real Brush Pens set of four. These are watercolor brush pens. Super excited, love those colors. Let's take a look. Two greens, a yellow and a blue. I absolutely love these colors. Let's see how they look on paper. Ooh. Oh, I love, I'm a sucker for this sort of dry brushing if you go too fast. That just looks like already a masterpiece of like a sky. I love it so much. But yeah, I'm definitely a sucker for dry brushing the way that the brush is not moist enough, I guess, to create a solid line. So you get this lovely texture. So that is our blue. I'm gonna call that one so that's our blue. That is very bright, holy cow. I'm going to call this one, don't look into the light yellow. These colors are fun. I'm excited to create something that might be a little bit bright, a little bit fun, a little bit happy, but we'll see how long that lasts until I turn it into something uh, gruesome and dark and sad. Love that green. I'm going to call it, hmm. P green, but not that P green. These names are too long. Why does this already look like some sort of deconstructed field? We have our dark grass up close to the viewer. We have our lighter field in the background that's being lit up by the sun in the background. And then we have our blue sky. So it just looks like this abstract version of a field. I'm gonna call it ripe grass. Does grass get ripe? I don't know, but that's what I'm gonna call it. Our next art supply is this Tombow Edo G10 colored pencil in porcelain blue. Let me just sharpen it really quick. I think this might be the first time ever I've used a Tombow product that wasn't in a pen or marker form. I really like this color. It's a nice earthy, sad blue, definitely. Definitely a lot different from what we have over there, but I could definitely see it layering in well. And how many times have I said definitely? Oh my goodness. We can, I was about to say, we can definitely add some texture into this illustration using a pencil. Ooh, hold on. What if we just went ahead and layered? Okay. Next up, we have this very big boy. We have the Higgins India Ink Pump Marker 2 millimeter chisel nib. This is a very interesting looking barrel. It nicely shows you, I guess, maybe how much ink is left in. All right, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to pump this guy, get him going. Oh, that was very fast. That is good. <laughs> Ooh. It's a chisel marker, but it's not your traditional sort of felt tip. It feels like rubber. It's very interesting. Oh my gosh, it's so, it's so juicy. Oh geez. Okay, let's move on to our Marabu Aqua Pen Graphics in, what is this? Looks like an unnamed color, but it looks like it's going to be a nice sort of pale skin tone or some sort of woodsy, uh, color. Okay, let's move on to our Copic multi-liner. Um, I think that's all there is to say about that. Obviously a lot easier to control than our big fat chisel nib. These seem to layer just fine. Put some birds in our abstract deconstructed sky. And last but not least, we have our Marabu Fineliner Graphics Skyline Set of Four. Our black, dark 
green, ultramarine blue. And our last art supplies, we have ruby red. So I feel like these for fine liners are just a little bit too light, but I'm very excited. We have some very bright colors to work with when playing around with this box and then a pencil to sort of tone everything down if it's just a little too bright for me. Oh, speaking of, I forgot, this is our sticker of the month. Okay, I'm excited to start sketching and playing around with color and just kind of getting creative. So let's sketch. mock-ups. I really like the way that this unicorn illustration looks, especially because it is Junicorn. So I thought it would be really fun to draw this unicorn in a very sort of loose and sketchy way, play around with the texture of our mediums, and just have a lot of fun with this one and see what we can come up with. I kind of want to try to let go of it being very perfect and having good borders and straight nice crisp clean lines because a lot of our materials in today's box has a lot of texture happening so i thought it would be really fun to hand draw our border here so this is what we're going to be drawing within so far i am loving the weird proportions on this unicorn i'm gonna keep this up all right, I think that's a pretty good, you probably can't see it because I've sketched very lightly ahead, but at least we have our second camera you can see. All right, let's start off by adding our sky. We're gonna start in the back of our illustration and work forward and also make sure that we work in a way that the art supplies that aren't waterproof go down last. Hopefully I can try to let go. I'm a very controlling perfectionist person, so we'll see if I can let go of that for a little bit. Trying to really purposefully go outside of our hand-drawn border to make it look kind of messier. Trying to be less controlling, but also it's hard to not be controlling when there's literally nothing coming out of the pen. <laughs> Well, that took absolutely much longer than I thought it was going to. So I'm going to also add some of this blue at the top to just add texture and include this color in it just a little bit. Just a quick messy layer, nothing I'm really looking for in particular. Just wanted to include the border into the sky a little bit. So I think that looks fine, I guess. Next up, I want to add some blushy, fleshy bits to, oh gosh. I do want the horse to be very pale so that it pops off of the blue, but I also want to add just a little bit of color to it so it doesn't look completely dead. Okay, that's light shading enough. I don't wanna to go too crazy. So next up, I do want to play around with our grass color. So I wanna to try to mix our lightest green with our yellow to get 
an even lighter green color. Okay, so we have a nice base coat down for our grass. Definitely gonna have to go through with the pen. Um, what else can we work on? Let's work on the unicorns. Yellow, very bright yellow hair. Missed opportunity, should I have made the horse's hair super shiny with this dry brushing? <laughs> I kind of like it, but I didn't do it for the rest of the hair, so it kind of looks out of place. It's the perfect shiny hair texture. <laughs> I guess it'll just be there. Maybe that's where the sun's hitting the horse. JK, once I started doing it, I can't stop. More shiny hair texture. <laughs> so there is the horse's hair. I think it would be interesting to try to mix this fine liner that is not waterproof into the yellow to create a nice bright orange shadow. So let's see if we can't do that. Hopefully it won't go too, too wrong, right? Is that a dark enough shadow, I wonder? I'm not really sure if that's dark enough. I hope it is. This horse has such lovely locks. Wow. I actually think I'm going to give it blue eyes so we can have the classic blonde hair blue eyes. Maybe I'll leave them scraggly so it looks spooked. <laughs> All right, coloring in the mountains in the background, I think I'm gonna start off with this light green and then make a dark green gradient, maybe. We'll see how that goes. <gasps> Wait a second, this just looks like a cactus in the background instead of a weird tall mountain. That's fine. That's completely fine. It's okay. It's fine, it's fine, okay. Dang it, now that I said it looked like a cactus, all I can imagine now is that these are cacti. All right, so we will put some dark green down here. Just a little bit, because a little bit goes a long way. And then take our light green again and spread it. Perfect. Ooh, we need to build on layers to our grass because our grass is looking quite flat right now. So I'm going to add shadow and texture into our grass. Okay, so we've built on a little bit of grass. I'm going to add just a little bit of the darker stuff here and there to add even more texture. I really like the effect of just having so much texture and lines and busy stuff to look at around the horse. And then the horse itself is just a very simple sort of white washed out character. So that's really fun to add all of these little details around it, but then keep the actual main focus a little bit more on the simple side. I like stuff like that. Okay, I think that's enough brush stroking for now. Let's see, I want to add some little red flowers in the field. I think that would be really cute. Just some scribbles here and there. Just to add a little bit more color. Every time I add little red circles for flowers like this, people ask me, is that blood splatters? And I'm like, no, they're flowers. But I like the way you think. Can I have too many flowers? Do I just keep going? It looks really nice and busy. Like I said, I really like the way that the horse is just a really simple white spot, but then we have all these little details in the grass. So I kind of just want to keep filling it with flowers, but like how many flowers is too many flowers? Ooh, I actually think it would be nice to use the red to outline the horse's hair just to keep it really bright and colorful, but then use the black on the horse's body. I absolutely love this red outline on the yellow color. It looks so good. Oh my gosh. I guess to use our green liner, I'm going to add just a few finer green grass pieces. Maybe I'll even add some leaves for some of our flowers. That's kind of cute. Bringing back in that sort of sketchy element that I said I was going to do, but then never did. I should add a few more big flowers. So I'm not really sure why they included the Copic multi-liner because we already have a black liner from the multi-set. So I guess I will just 
save the Copic for a second and outline the horse with this one. For some reason, I just felt like doing the broken line art. So I guess that's what I'm doing for some reason. <laughs> Sometimes you just feel like, you just feel like doing a thing. I'm a little torn between the line art. I think it's really good in the sense that it helps separate the horse from the background. So we do have that solid line showing us where the character is. But at the same time, I kind of like the lineless look. It was nice and soft. So I'm not really sure which one I liked more. But it definitely was a little harder to see, especially in these lighter areas where the sky was, where the horse began. I'm sorry, I keep calling it a horse. It's a unicorn. I think I like the idea of having the horn fade out to no line art for some reason. Let's see how that looks. All right, so we have our horse lined. I think I'm also going to, hmm, I sort of wanted to line these mountains in the background, but I think I'm just gonna add some texture to them because these darker ones aren't super separated from the ones next to it, so that kind of bothers me. Just wanna give it that extra push of separation. And depth with the black line work. Okay, I kinda like that. On one hand, I wanna give our unicorn texture, like fur texture, but on the other hand, I really like how simple it is compared to the background. I think that's a really nice look, so I kind of don't want to mess with that. I do, however, want to put birds in the background because I love putting birds in backgrounds. I want to do one last thing, obviously, because we have one last art supply left. We have our Higgins India Ink um, Giant Chisel Nib Marker. Well, I say giant, but comparison to our other supplies, I guess it's giant. It's a thick boy, and originally in the sketch I had before, I had these little black creatures around our unicorn, but I kind of want to do something else. I think it might be fun to have maybe, oh my gosh, I think I'm just gonna jump into it. Are you ready? This is, this is gonna be risky, but I'm gonna do it. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm just gonna jump into it. Oh, that's not what I meant to do, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta go for it. Anyway, let's just do some fun little symbols. We'll do like a circle over here. Maybe we'll put a, a thing inside of it. And we'll do more dots over here, and then more dots over here, and then we'll do like, hey, let's, let's do a square. Maybe I'll even do another square. That's right, we did that, two squares. <laughs> okay, I think that is it for our illustration for this Art Snacks. I am actually really happy with how this turned out. Like I said, I really like how I focused on making a very busy background and then keeping our character very simple, which is very me style. I think it turned out really well. I love the contrast of all this dark stuff up here. And it just, I like it. I think it turned out really cool. The bright colors are nice. I like the textures. All right, there's our unicorn, our first unicorn for Junicorn. And the more I say Junicorn, the, the more wrong it sounds. But anyway, here is our Art Snacks illustration. Thank you so much to Art Snacks for sending me this box. If you want your own Art Snacks, there's a link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Stay golden. But before I go, I wanna give a huge thank you to all of my patrons for their support. You guys are seriously amazing. If you want coloring pages, early access to my videos and more, check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Thank you guys all seriously so much. Bye.